Set a timer for 55 minutes. So, apparently nobody's around, but the connection is still utter shit. Which means this will just be a series and not streamed like the other games. But, oh no, I'm so tired. Until dawn. That was streamed for the most part. I think the first, like, two and a half hours were streamed. And then, like, <laughs> the last however long the game was wasn't streamed. And then, like, the last two hours were or something. Usually, right before I go shaking my tits for the press, I like to go see how the professionals do it. Some might say the chief of police has no business in an institution like this. But in fact, it's the quietest and safest place in town. You won't run into any reporters, nobody gets into any fights, nobody drinks too much, nobody even raises their voice. The place is owned by an elderly gentleman who knows how to keep things under control. That's why I never invite my friends here. I wanted to make an exception for my 60th birthday, but most of my colleagues are young enough to be my sons, and they'd rather just hire prostitutes. Why stare at some boobs when you can take the whole package for yourself? But there's none of that in our club. Even looking too long is considered indecent. You can get an occasional glimpse, like by accident. The rest of the time you just pretend that you're immersed in conversation, or just come by for a drink. Doesn't mean these gentlemen wouldn't want their bald heads smothered in tits. It's just that nobody says it out loud. My younger colleagues might call it hypocrisy, but I call it the good old-fashioned manners. Good manners and leave the rest unsaid. She agrees to unbutton her blouse, and we agree not to pay too much attention. The girls are on a quiet prowl, too. They're looking for a way out of their cramped rooms. Maybe make friends with some wealthy patron with a pacemaker and dentures. Everybody wants something. But we have to control ourselves, or we'll all turn into libertines and prostitutes. Hell, if there weren't any rules, I'd be belching and farting, You're jumping off. up on the table, arms held high, yelling, Shake it, baby! <laughs> No idea how I got so barbaric. Mm, that was something for an intro. July 15th, Monday. Mayor Rogers, Sex Media, City Hall confirmed rumors of Jack Boy threats. Mar War 2 to be shown in Freeburg the day before the World War premiere. None of that was interesting. When I was a kid, my father sometimes told me at bedtime that if I closed my eyes and didn't open them for a long time, all the demons would blow away. Yesterday I turned 60, but I still take his advice. Not because I'm sentimental or want to keep the memory of my father alive. I just can't think of a better solution. To get away from all the demons that haunt Freeburg, I'd need to wear a blindfold 24-7. Plus, it's a good idea to act blind when talking to reporters. At least that's what my colleagues say. They're afraid of press conferences. But for me, it's more like a confessional. No matter what lies you tell, you're privately thinking the honest answers. It helps me remember who I am. The fact that I'll be reading all about it in the papers tomorrow is a small price to pay. Call it penance for the preacher. I don't think pasta is what I should have had for breakfast today. This is the first time I'm afraid of those answers my mind has given me. 
Not because I'm mad I'm losing my job. Though it's true, I'm mad as hell. Not because I subconsciously blame everyone else. Though I damn sure do blame them. And don't even ask me what my next move is. I can't imagine. But even that doesn't scare me. The worst thing is, I know I'm gonna have to do something. And I'll be damned if I know how far I'll go. I may have a lot of vices, but predictability isn't one of them. I learned a long time ago how to drive away the swarming demons. But what do you do when they're trying to rip your soul from your skin? Go to sleep. Shutting my eyes tight as I can. The best solution remains the same. Play blind. I just hope the reporters think I was blinded by the camera flash. Uh, that was... Oh, good morning. Yesterday, the mayor's office accidentally now, uh, officially announced your interest. It just come as a surprise. Do you know about it in advance? Uh, what does it matter whether it came as a surprise? My business is my own. Do you already know the name of your sister? Oh, of course not. I don't think the mayor's office knows. It. After the recent corruption scandal, your deputy, Francis Vander, said he was looking forward to resigning. Resigning if the mayor offered him your position, would you change his mind? Uh, uh, he's made up his mind to leave. I don't see anything affecting that decision. Although Kendrick was acquitted, many still believe that the police are cooperating with the mob. Do you have anything to say about this? Bullshit. Your personal relationship with the mayor could be the reason behind your retirement. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> How's the back today, Mr. Boyd? Same as usual. How did the press conference go? You can read about it in the newspapers tomorrow. Don't let anyone in. Even Mr. Kendrick? Especially Mr. Kendrick. As soon as I heard the door creak, I knew what face I'd see. When I tell Emma not to let anyone in, there's only one man it could be. Rude, arrogant, no warning. That's Mayor Rogers in a nutshell. White summer shoes, white socks, white shorts, white polo shirt, and the white smile of a hungry shark. Yeah, Mayor no Rogers smile. enters every room like he owns the place. Even the floorboards under his feet sound like they're creaking an apology. He never shied away from the odd corruption scheme. It's like the devil walks behind him. In the movies, the villains controlling the city play golf with the judges. Rogers plays tennis with them instead. That's about the only difference. Jack, I was hoping to catch you after the press conference. You, uh, you ran away so quick. There's no smoking at City Hall. No reason for me to hang around. Well, this morning I signed a ban on smoking in all public buildings. Soon you won't be able to smoke here either. <laughs> Soon enough I won't be here at all. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. The people of this city like you, Jack. The police chief of all people. <laughs> Don't, uh... Don't betray that, Jack. Don't get wrapped up in any schemes. Sit nice and quiet for the next 180 days, and uh, and you'll be remembered as a hero. That's the only thing that you still have left. 
be the hero. Then how am I supposed to scrape together a retirement fund? You had a million chances to secure a luxury pension, one that even I would have envied, although I've never set aside any money for myself. I'm not planning to retire anytime soon. One hundred and eighty days of quiet, Jack. That's all I need. I don't have any problems with you, and you won't have any problems with me. I have a new assistant, Troy Starr. If you have something to tell me, call him. But try not to bother him. He's a, he's a busy man. <laughs> I'll do my best. And quit smoking up the office. One of my friends will be using it soon. Man, sounds like a cunt. Oh, I'm sorry, babe. Only the mayor has this number. Mr. Mayor? Yeah, is this Troy Star? Yes. Go fuck yourself, Troy Star. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've survived a day. 179 more to go. Francis Kendrick could replace Jack Boyd. Jack Boyd is the first police corporation with the mafia. Head of culture department on the Yeah, it's great. Don't care. Culture department. Hurry up. I say Cops I don't use really the police station cafeteria it. anymore. There's some kind of stigma against sitting shoulder to shoulder with your partners. Everybody just takes snacks from the machines or grabs a meal and hammers it down in the corner like a vulture on a corpse. The main thing? Don't look into anyone's eyes. Could be construed as an invitation to sit together. The only people eating here are ghosts. My deputy, Francis Kendrick, he recently became one of those ghosts. The subject of one of the most devastating corruption scandals in the history of Freeburg. No evidence to support the accusations, but everyone knows Kendrick's days are numbered. I need that file I asked for. Needs to be ready tonight. Francis didn't say anything, but I understood. Ghosts aren't supposed to talk. Besides, I got a feeling he was already finished. Uh, uh, I don't need anything. I'm good. No, nothing. Hold up. I shall be back.
Alright, hopefully I can get through a day, because I was just on by call. But I'm pretty sure I can get through a day, yeah? Depending on how long the days are. I know, I believe I don't have to set my action in the slot. Uh, it's Peter Manager reports uh, during the show, Citizen Game, the drunk man attempted to force swing it. No word or good, which was the word Rosebud when he was denied an entry, finally attacked the cash. The main prefer a blonde or Berlin, I'll take ten to eat. Oh, whoa, uh, audio, music. We'll do ten percent. I don't know how loud 10% is, but we can do 10%. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, it shouldn't be. The Fender car off is unharmed. Yeah, let's get Price up there so Price can just start going out by herself. She's old. Three teenagers armed with a shotgun robbed the video store and made off with the whole. Oh, Alright, hold up. Oh, uh, wait, wait, wait. I want to put my top officers on this one. Alright, well, I don't want to put my top officers, but I'm going to. I assume that these are point base. So. Uh, the brother and sister clash with each other over their deceased father's will, according to one of them. Uh, their lawyers. We don't dare separate them, and our security guards are off. Uh, all right. They passed the survival laws. The teenager just decked out their musician, and they ran away with his guitar and his money. All right. I don't know if that was a good idea. All of them. A vehicle in question is parked right out the boundaries and the sounds of moaning and loud laughter can be heard through the living room window. Let's go! Uh, the fight, offender caught, officer on, and they both going up. I assume that's good when they go up and that is their skill level. And then depending on their skill level, they can handle more drastic situations. Offender cut, off oh, just on a heart. Yeah, I ain't not waiting for them to get back. I don't pronounce that. Let's end the day. Used to be when I asked Kendrick to stay late at the office, he liked to grumble and crack wise. Nowadays, he doesn't have the strength for it. Slumped shoulders, blank stare, wrinkled skin. The past few weeks, I don't hardly recognize my old friend. In his younger years, he reminded me of a gallant royal officer in an old Kipling story. Kendrick isn't just crumbling under the weight of the public pressure, but from the shame of it all. Internal Affairs raided the library he inherited from his grandfather, hoping they'd find buckets of cash stashed in the pages. Heard about the look on his face, the fearless policeman standing helpless in horror. I've known Francis for 30 years. The past 20 years, he's played loose with the law. And I know that at a certain point, every stolen dollar brings more misery than anything else. Probably sounds crazy, but I sympathize with the guy. 
What can I do? Your friends are your friends, and these are the waters we swim in. Called all of the people on that list today. Now they know you're in business. So you could get a call from any of them. You don't need to worry about any of them. I've cleared them all. And what kind of business are we talking here? It's nothing too serious, just like you asked. Should be just a few small favors. Payments will vary depending on the situation and who you're dealing with. How much are you looking to earn? Half a million. Half a million? Why not a whole million? Because everybody wants to take a million. Figured I'd try something different. Half a million in 180 days? Well, you could earn it all above board if you netted all the big fish and hit all your bonuses. Never knew you for a fisherman. Well, you never got into my business, and I'm not trying to get into yours. But be careful about bringing in any other cops. Sooner or later, they'll put the finger on you. And, and one more thing, Jack. I remember what you said, but I should probably add one more name to that list. Christopher Sand. Sand. Who is Christopher Christopher Sand? G. Sand. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Everyone knows the name, but few could tell you who he is. The old man stays away from the spotlight. Always wears old-fashioned jeans and knitted sweaters. Gives to charity. Rarely attends social events. An avid hunter, I hear. Even dabbles in poetry. You'd never guess he's the head of the oldest and most powerful gang in the city. Goes back as far as his great-grandfather. And Sand is strict about following the old rules. He rarely involves himself in commonplace murders and robberies. Hardly needs to intimidate anyone to get his point across. The people who work for him each have their sphere. They provide protection where needed, even work with the authorities when they want to make a deal. Meanwhile, Sand pulls the strings without getting his hands dirty. People sometimes mistake his quiet approach. A couple years ago, an arms dealer decided to expand its business without asking permission, and his whole family paid the price. In four weeks, Sand killed 31 people, old men, women, even a few teenagers. And Sand's people made sure every paper reported it. Frank, I don't want to hear you say that name again. Jack, please, listen to me. I'm in with these guys. We agreed, Frank. That's not the kind of business I'm into. I don't go there. Never have, never will. Da 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 da. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Francis Kendrick announced the retirement date. Legendary singer. Construction of cinema music. Let's post again. You can't even. You don't post. Uh, I mean, where I'm at, shit doesn't get posted on everything. It's a really long deadline, so they'll work for the first two months. Then they'll show up, like halfway through the, uh, like six months after the fact. Uh. Oh, what a stripes. Oh, okay. So I can just promote an employee. Oh, so that that will just upgrade their level. Oh, but she went off. Butch. Oh, Birch. Alright. Here we go. I'm giving them... Alright. It's just prestiging them so that they get a higher level. Okay. Got it. Uh, work our way... For... Oh. Alright, we'll just work our way from left to right. I like jazz music. I couldn't listen to it 24-7, but I don't mind just listening to a couple songs here. Bears, police station. Oh, uh, labor market. Shift. Hire for shift A. Hire. Shift B. Cause shift B sucked.
Uh, we received a frightening call from a local cathedral this morning. The boat discovered that someone entered the old cemetery during the night. The old yard's tombstones are painted with. Uh, Businessman Harley Jones looking out his window saw two teenagers scratching the fence so slow on the car. Let's do you, you need So we all can get upgraded. Upgraded. Did, did. Who she's seen on television just this morning. The culprit is sitting at the window eating a burger. Holy. Oh, your left. Nope. Man, my breakfast consisted of just pasta here today. How do you. Alright, whatever. Yo, how'd y'all manage that? There's three of you. I'm pretty sure one of you had a taser. It was a misdemeanor. You can tase it. Even on a felony, you can tase somebody. The list. They got a hostage or something, then you Ah, you fucking Frank Nero. You mistake my boy Frank Nero. You can't, bro. Who am I thinking? I'm thinking of Jeff Hardy when he's Nero. Uh. Anonymous call just came in a clown carrying balloons at the skate ring selling crap. Alright, let's go. Uh, sorry, Chief, but I quit. And one night I pulled more cash than I earned in a month working at this dumb. As said, he wouldn't mind taking me on. I guess I wasn't cut out to be a cop. You beat cop. Ah, I got money though. It's fine. I got a lot of money. I ain't even care. I ain't even care. A naked man carrying a canister of gasoline has threatened to set himself on fire unless his favorite chewing gum becomes popular. That is such a stupid reason, but I can definitely see that being something in real life. So, oh, oh, labor market, I can hire a new guy. Ah, uh, see, I just hired somebody. I hired the guy on the left for shift A, so I will hire you for shift B. Please rub a clown to see making blue animals with a kid. Cover up and rank over, tend to be, uh, carefully watch the clown in the stands. 11, 11. Fender Taw, on harm, and Butch Jr. is going back up. 4, 11. Suicide threat. Uh, Fender Taw, Oshies on harm. And end the fucking day. End it. I want to hop right into the next one. I don't mind getting the cutscenes, but I just really don't want to get one in between all the time. I just really want to hop into it. Because I'm actually really enjoying just the uh, future of sending people out. I mean, obviously, it'll definitely pick up, but this is them just easing me into it. Uh, to reveal his identity when the time is right. Robespierre. I don't know how you pronounce that. Robes. Robespierre. That's how we do it. Enemies using feminists to destroy Freeburg. Feminist organization denied official Mm. Right, right, right. I, ain't I ain't even care that I just really uh. Whenever I'm alone at home and there's a knock at the door, I always hope it'll be my wife, Laura. She's always forgetting her keys. Hello, my name is Steve, and you're Jack Boyd, is that right? To get to my front door, the Bible boys walked about a mile from the local bus stop, jumping over mud puddles and skirting a couple of landfills. Laura doesn't go in for religion either, but according to her, these brave lunatics with their fake smiles deserve at least a minute of attention. She patiently listens to them, asks them questions, regales them with pastries, and 
never once dropping a hint of condescension. When I watch her do it, I've got to admit it gets me. I'd have hugged those boys, sat with them on the porch and lit up a cigar. But a month after Laura left, all I could do was quietly ask them not to bother me. Today I'm a little rougher still. Shut the door on his nose this time. Another couple weeks at this rate and I'll be greeting anyone who comes close with my service pistol pointed towards the sky, ready to fire my warning shots. In my life, even the basic stuff never goes like it's supposed to. Normally, when a wife is going to leave home, she'll make a scene or at least sit everyone down for a serious conversation. But Laura just disappeared. The children in the stories always stand on the side of the mother, but all three of our sons supported me. The in-laws always blame the husband for making their daughter unhappy. But now Sally, Laura's mother, well, we sort of have a pact. The fellow She's Laura ran off with mother. is young enough to be her son. I hear he's 30 years old. Of all the possible information a man can know about his wife's lover, I get hit with that. Fortunately, Laura's mother doesn't like the way it sounds either. Sally figures this guy just thought he'd have some fun with a mature woman, but he'll be back chasing college girls before the year is out. So we have an agreement. Sally's gonna track down Laura and try to reason with her, and we'll arrange a meeting. Meanwhile, I'm supposed to not do anything stupid, oh, which of course difficult. means anything at all. It's a crazy situation. I'm the police chief, and the person I'm trusting to find my wife is an old woman armed with a phone book. But I can't afford to lose Sally as an ally. So for the moment, I had to swallow my pride. Hello. Mrs. Markham, this is Boyd. Oh, is there any news? That's what I wanted to ask you. Have you found anything? An address? Phone number? Have you spoken to her? Don't worry, Jack. I've narrowed the range to two suspects, or whatever you like to say at your police building. At <laughs> my police building, we find people faster than a funny old woman chirping on the phone with my wife's girlfriends. Oh, you're an old man, Jack. Come to your senses. They'd give us straight odds on the street. But I've got more energy, Jack. Maybe you think I'm a foolish old woman, but I go to my book club, argue with the girls about Byron, and it gives me energy. I talk to my dogs, and it gives me energy. And you have nothing, Jack. Like you don't even have a hobby. Energy. You got no passion. It's why Laura left you. Let's not go back into that, Sally. Find my wife, and we can discuss my hobbies later. I'm waiting for your call, and my patience is running thin. Laura, if you've stopped loving me, I'll let you go. I can't expect the impossible from you. Just don't let me die out here, okay? Uh, my dog, uh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, take the day out. Yo, I just hired you. That was the guy I just hired. Oh, I have four detectives over here. Okay, I gotta hire two detectives on the other side. I'd rather keep it even two de- I don't get what the point of the detectives are right now, but... Bud meets Bob. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, a racist gang has recently made some trouble in the city. They're capturing black townspeople and beating them to death. They recently sent a message to Logo as he's promising to kill all the black doctors, firemen, and police. We don't need any more dead police, especially not mere months before the election. The racists are gaining more and more followers, and even some of our citizens support them. You have to fire all your black employees over the next two days due to the amount of nope. I'm good. Man, yeah, I'm good, man. If hey, I don't give a shit if you fucking are a dog. If you could do your job better than me, then fuck, you deserve to have the job, not me. <laughs> a dog can do. It. A member of the city splitting if you saw an elderly man approaching some expensive cars in the parking lot, carrying you know, a long iron rod. The whole street could hear him shouting, "Bastards, thieves, bloodsuckers!" All right, let's go. We all need to get out there. Homicide in the ghetto. Ross Armstrong. Back at the Ronnie Moore was found shot outside his home. He 
is the lead detective, but obviously there are going to be other detectives on the case. Can I put, um, hold up, let me see this, uh, okay, let's see this one first. A gas station surveillance camera recorded a car that's on the stolen vehicles list. You, you, and you. Okay, uh, can I, if I go to the police station, right, and, no, that's not what I want to see. What I wanted to see was if I could personally, um, how do I do it? How, how do I say it? Uh, I wanted to see if I could put, like, people, well, this is shifty, but I wanted to see if I could put, like, sh these guys from shift A on and then hire a new guy for shift A as well. I'm trying to get price up there. So, uh, I feel like I can get price. The investigation has started. They drove by in a sedan. They shot like they shot like a machine gun. I didn't see much. Oh wait, where am I? Oh, there I am. Oh shit. Oh uh, no. Whoop, there we go. I only heard a few muffled shots. Drunk witness. I only heard a few muffled shots. Uh, this car got one these days. It's been causing for a long time. And recently, there's been lots of cursing and carrying on. I don't remember the car in the neighborhood was quiet. I never heard any shots. Okay, so it was a silence. Okay, it was a, it was a gun with a silencer on it. The police these days don't do nothing. I almost died myself. I went to buy someone and was nearly hit by some idiot's car. They don't know the make of the car, so the only thing I have is a sedan. But definitely was a silenced pistol. Well, silence gun. I just, I just don't see why you put. I, I mean, I get why you put a silencers on like ARs. Definitely not a shotgun. I don't. I, if you put a silencer on a shotgun, I'm just gonna question the fucking. I just don't see the point of that one. But an AR, I could see it, but I normally only see silencers on pistols. The driver is nowhere to be seen. Interview any potential witness. Search the car. Wait a safe distance for the drivers to appear. Yo. Is that I I can hire somebody new. Shit. Core Ramsey mother Sally Tripton has expressed her concerns about a suspicious man wearing uh, labor market. What shift is this? Shift B. Somebody just died on. Yeah. Dragons Club. How many suspicious individual offender cops on harm? There we go. Uh, Mr. Boyd, I'm opening for you. Brace first, Mark's article for my exam. I want to hold this bar match where one of my students takes on your telescope after the fight. I'll teach your man if you trace something that will help him out on the street. Price. <laughs> Could have sent Price there. Oh shit. <laughs> Oh, almost side of door. Uh, okay. Oh, no, this this actually might be done because, like, okay. Uh, put frames in sequence. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, there we go. Travis Horton, a known racist who already has several suspicious convictions. Three eleven A in progress. Uh, two officers. And the SWAT team! Uh, a bartender in force that a couple dancers started fighting over tips and a cat fight broke out. Shit! I can't do anything for that one. If the motherfucker didn't call for his dog, or I think, I don't know if that was this shift or last shift, but damn it. Chief, I got nailed the Jap a couple. Uh, I nailed the Jap a couple times, but he was too fast for me in one on points. I don't really understand all the rules, so I can't keep track of points very well. But he was all right. He even showed me a few tricks after the match. I got carried away a little and pulled my back. I think I can take the day off. No, but sure. Fight. Yeah. 
Okay, at least he just escaped. Just whatever. It's not like somebody was killed. On the stage, there are two strippers going at it. It's gone beyond the area into a full on cat fight. The bouncer is fast asleep. Clearly, two ways to end is where they're wrong. Me fighting. Oh, I believe you see the. I don't. Right. Damn, she died. So, what do I do with dead officers? I can't. Do I just have to wait for the next shift to render them dead? Retired police officer Thomas Blaine shoots pregnant woman. Mayor Rogers City has no problem with raises. Officer Blaine explains, I thought she was a suicide bomber. Why would a man need a barn to store all the stuff you can't bring home? About 30 years ago, back when I was young and interested in farming, I carried all kinds of junk home. After a day in the field, I'd come home with buckets, shovels, dirty boots and clothes, and instantly transform the living room. But even back then, there's something I always kept in the barn. I stopped keeping my pills inside the house because every time I was about to take a triple, someone would knock on my bedroom door. Now they're knocking on my barn door. Well, fine. It's not every day that someone comes to visit your barn. In all the years we worked together, Kendrick never came to visit the house. We drank at bars, went fishing, went to the mountains, even chased off some poachers one time. But he never came for dinner with the family. We never watched football over here. And now he's brought his friends to visit my barn. I always try to look unsurprised, like it's an everyday thing to get visitors at the old barn, especially guests with their own personal bodyguards. But Kendrick is sharp enough to see he's caught me with my pants on backwards. Sorry for the surprise, Jack. We saw you from the car. Surprise. Figured we'd find surprise, you here. Jack. I'm going in for a minute, Perfect fellas. Mimic. These guys will wait outside. How long you been dating the lover boys? They're Possibly sans possible. people, Jack. Yeah. So now you're appearing in public with members of the Mafia? Jack. I'm leaving tonight. More like fleeing. Jenny and I are taking the girls and making a run for it. Probably won't be seeing each other again. I've got new documents, a new name, a new life, everything new. The papers say you're still working your last week for the department. I've got to get out today. I won't be getting another chance. Don't know if you noticed, but the whole city is against me. You told your Mafia friends about your plans. Jackie. If I don't fix everything with them in the next few hours, they're going to kill me. And not just me. My family, my relatives, God, Jack, I don't know who else. They found out that I was planning to run, and they demanded that we close our contract today. Your contract, Frank? Really? Is that how you talk now? Maybe you should call in the lawyers to straighten all this out. Now mm. is not the time, Jack, please. I have a commitment to them until the end of the year. They need an inside line at police headquarters. I can't just give them back the money. That's not how the Mafia works. If I can't find someone I can trust tonight, I'm dead. You know me, Jack. I wouldn't ask you if I wasn't afraid they'd cut my daughters to pieces before sunrise. He's the damn fool who puts his daughters in the crosshairs in the first place. Anyone in my place would have dressed him down good. But I didn't want to pile it on. Fate's already got this guy's soul in the grinder. I don't want his... See, I wouldn't care if he was going to die. I just don't want his kids to die because his kids are innocent in this. 
Give him my phone number and tell him it's done. Don't call me. Don't come to work today. I don't want to see or hear from you again. Time for you to go. Jack. I... Get the fuck out of my nice cozy barn, Frank. Oh, damn it. Ropes, Pierre. At the time, I was trying not to think about what just happened. It was almost too much to take in. I'm probably the most popular police chief in the history of the city, and I have to admit, I've thought about that more than once, sometimes with a little pride, even. In one of the features they wrote about me in the papers, they said it pretty plain. He catches the criminals. Believe me, high praise like that is unheard of in Freeburg, especially for a cop. And here I am, the person who catches criminals, and I've agreed to help the Mafia, or I'll come home to a bag stuffed with my kid's body parts. Right before the last hammer falls. Hey, remember that cop who caught criminals? It turns out he was a Mafia bitch. And all for the sake of a greedy, corrupt cop who should have fled the country years ago. That sound right to you? Well, I'm definitely gonna keep playing this game straight. Kingston didn't come to work today. That fucking cunt, bro. You haven't even worked a full sh- oh, No. No. Fuck's sake. Alright, well, I'm gonna end it there, but I'm gonna catch you all in the next one.